Welcome to the knowledge series of IT Patshala. This tutorial video is the second part of logic building module. Our learners are advised to go through the first part of the logic building module before proceeding with this video. In this video we will discuss flow charting as a logic modeling tool including flow charting symbols and their usage. The most commonly used logic modeling tools are flow charting, pseudocodes. Flow charting is a standardized set of symbols that represent different types of logical operations. The symbol shapes are standardized and the way they are read is also standardized to the flow chart diagram. The flow chart represents a graphical view of a logic model with each symbol representing a logical step. Flow charts consist of standard flow chart symbols connected by lines where each symbol reflects an operation of logic. In addition, each symbol not only is standardized to represent an operation but also labels the logic operation with a short explanation what the logic instruction performs. Which flowchart shape should you use and when? If you are new to flowcharting, the large number of shapes can be intimidating. Therefore, we will now discuss as to which shape to use when. While most of the flowcharts can be drawn with the five first basic flowchart shapes that we will discuss, but others are optional. Terminator this shape tells you where does the flowchart begin and end. It shows the entry point of your flowchart and the exit point. To designate the start of your flowchart, you would fill this shape with words like start or begin. Lines with arrows. Flowcharts are usually drawn from top to bottom or left to right. The lines with arrows determine the flow through the chart. If two lines cross, one should ignore the perpendicular line and continue following the line to the next shape. Rectangle. In most flowcharts, rectangle is the most common shape. It is used to show a process, task, action or operation. It shows something that has to be done or an action that has to be taken. Decision box. The shape is used to ask a question. The answer to the question determines which arrow to follow out of the decision box. The arrows flowing from the decision shape are usually labeled with yes, no or true false. But you can label them any way you want as long as the meaning is clear. Decisions can take place at points where results need to be evaluated before the process continues. Circle. If you need to connect to another page or another section of the chart and cannot draw a line, you can use a circle. You draw the line to the circle and label the circle with a letter. Then you place a copy of the circle where you want the flow to continue. This should be avoided unless there is no other way out. Document or report box. A rectangle with a curved bottom represents a document or report box. The document flowchart symbol is for a process step that produces a document. Off page connector. This shape means the flow continues to another page. A letter or page number in the shape tells the user where to go. It is an alternative to using a circle. Alternate process. As the name suggests, this flowchart symbol is used when the process flow step is an alternate to the normal process step. Manual input. This shape looks like a side view of a keyboard and often represents entering data into a computer via a keyboard. Manual operation. The trapezoid shape represents a manual operation. That is any operation or adjustment that has to be done by hand rather than a machine or automatically. Preparation box. This shape is used to differentiate between steps that prepare for work versus steps that actually do the work. Database. This shape represents a data file or database. Comment box. The shape was used to add a comment or additional descriptive text to a software flowchart. A dotted line should extend from the comment to the symbol it references. The shape has become obsolete now. Second part of our logic building module ends here. We'll be covering the remaining topics of logic building module in the third part of this tutorial. In that video, we'll talk about the pseudocodes as a logic modeling tool and let you write a few sample codes.